maybe this morning you're wondering if you belong here, if you belong in this house. Well, we want to make sure that you know today that this is where you belong, in the Father's house. Welcome home. Welcome to New Life Church this morning. Today we want to celebrate every single woman in the church. I was looking for the table, but couldn't find it. (laughs) And here's a verse that I want to speak over every single lady here today. Every woman, from the youngest to the oldest. This is Proverbs 31. It says that there are many virtuous and capable women in the world, but you surpass them all. You surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty does not last. I can feel it draining from my face right now with every wrinkle. But a woman who fears the Lord will be greatly praised. Reward her for all she has done and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. Today, church, let's celebrate and let's praise every woman by giving them a big clap offering together. Every spiritual mum, this house is full of spiritual mums. Every dad who is both mother and father, every single dad, we love you. Every adoptive parent, every mother, would you like to take your seats? Thank you for the table. Bless you. Bless you, bless you. You know, one of the mums I want to give a shout out to is Sarah Palmer. Sarah Palmer's been in the church with her husband Ian for a couple of years and they're part of the furniture here and Sarah she has recently Sarah and Ian they've fostered five children and they have four of their own they have nine children in their home right here in Emsworth so Sarah we honor you give us a wave love you Sarah Palmer I want to be more like you girl (laughs) oh I realise that Mother's Day, it can be really difficult for some people. And as I prepped, I want to mention before we go on, you know, there's people here, there's Liz on my team, she lost her mum. Her mum is in heaven right now. So we want to remember those of you who've lost your mums, someone special to you, maybe a spiritual mum. Also, we want to remember today, those of you who didn't have the childhood you deserved, Maybe you didn't have a mum that loved you like you deserve to be loved. We celebrate you today. We celebrate you, the woman that God has made you. And we champion you for all that God and how you are flourishing before our eyes as we watch you in this church. And also we want to remember all those mums today, every woman that is longing for a child. I was with a friend of mine this week. And you know, as a community of faith, we want to stand with you today. And we want to lift your hands to the one who is able, to the one who is able to do it, to heal you, to restore and to bring you a child. So we pray today you would be encouraged today in this building. Today, my message is super simple. My name's Esther. It might be a bit rough around the edges, but I want to celebrate you today. I want to celebrate God. Are you glad, ladies, that God made you a lady, a girl? (laughs) I'm so glad, and I know not all of us feel that way. And my message, by the way, is not just for the chicks this morning. It's not just for the girls. Don't worry, dads. Don't worry, guys. Um, Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus, that we can be together on this day. I pray, Lord, put your spirit in this message, Lord Jesus. If not, it's just a bunch of words. But I I thank you that we are alive for this hour as your church. Lord, in the chaos of this world, you are calling your church to arise. And I pray you'd stir our hearts today to live with passion for this hour. And all the church said, amen, amen. I I became a mom at the age of 26. In 2006, my Liliella Ellis arrived. She's here on the front row. I never show pictures of my kids, by the way, because they don't let me. But I thought the baby ones, they let me use. So Lily, with her 
Blonde hair, blue eyes, she arrived and changed my life forever. <laughs> she brought me so much joy. She changed my life for the better. Better. Everywhere I went, Liliella would follow me. I have visions very clear in my mind of I'd walk around the house and she'd just follow me. She'd crawl everywhere. She came to band practice with me. She spent the first oh, five years of her life coming, or maybe less, coming to youth with me every Friday. She was a wonderful gift and it is a wonderful gift to my life. And then two years later, Jasmine Nicole Ellis arrived. Jazzy Nicole means sweet victory. And then Levi Benjamin Ellis arrived two and a half years after that. And I love that picture because Jasmine, she's the one with the dummy. She had the habit of pinching her brother's dummy. Okay, whenever I closed my eyes or had my back turned, she'd nab it. It was her. But, but Levi, he didn't care. He's like a chilled third child, lovable. Is it there's something about the third, fourth, fifth, sixth child? They're just chilled. The last child. And what I realized about parenting this week is that really I know nothing, uh, is that it's the most incredible job, but you learn it on the job. Nothing prepares you for parenting. You know, this cute little baby is put in your arms and you learn as you go. Okay, you've watched the videos and those YouTube ones, they put you off of childbearing and all that. But you know, you, we read the books on parenting, but nothing equips you for parenting like an actual child. So parent, young people, I want to say, just ease up on us parents. Ease up, kids, if there's a child snuck in here. Elliot, ease up on us. We're learning on the job, Elliot. <laughs> and as I've gotten older, it's made me appreciate my mum even more. My mum, she's here on the second row. Her name is Avril Warren. I know many of you know her. <laughs> My mum. And we celebrate every mum at home. I forgot to say that. We love you mums at home. My mum is my hero. My mum is a mum to many in this house. She's an, a nana to even more people. She is an auntie to everyone. Do you remember the days when we used to call everyone that was older than us auntie? Isn't that weird? Imagine if we did it now, it's a bit peculiar. And today I want to talk a little bit about my mum, because it's Mother's Day. Who else can I talk about but my queen mother? And uh, mum and dad would never ever want me to get up on stage and to make out their parenting to be perfect and our family home to ever be perfect, because it wasn't. But you know, I honor them for the cost, their sacrifice, blood, sweat, and tears. So I'm going to talk a little bit this morning about my childhood and what I learned from my mum. And what I love most about my mum is that she loves Jesus. Her love for Jesus has never, ever wavered. In the highs and the lows of, of her life, of raising us, she has always been passionate about Jesus. He's always been first. She's always been dedicated to Jesus. And mom was raised in Essex with 10 other children. And my mom's dad was Jack, and he lost his first wife to sickness. And years later, he married my mom's mom called Gladys. And they went on to have four children, and my mum was one of those children. So my mum's home was full growing up. They used to share, three, three children used to share the bed. And uh, my mum got engaged to dad at the age of 15. Oh, young people don't get any ideas. <laughs> Block your ears for a sec, Lil. And then she married dad at 17. Wow. No, get no ideas. Dad's got to save up for your wedding first. And my message this morning is called A Legacy of Peace. I long to leave a legacy of peace on this earth. And as I prep for today, I kept hearing the words of Jesus in my heart and in my ears and in my mind. It said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. 
I long to be known as a child of God. I don't know about you sitting here today. I want to be known as someone that has a different spirit, that has something that is different about me, that, is, that I am a peacemaker, that I bring peace to this world, to this community, to my family, to my marriage. And when I think about mum and uh, her role in my life and in our family and over our home and over her role here in the church, the church family and in, in the community, my mum carried peace. She was a peacemaker for this hour. When a war was raging on the inside of us kids, and you might be sitting here today and a war is raging on the inside of you. When, when maybe we came home from school and we were feeling peer pressure, we were being sucked, the life was being sucked out of us because of peer pressure. Maybe we had our own insecurities, our own pain, what my mom brought most to us was peace. Her influence was peace. Her influence on the church was peace, that steady one. When she met people in the hairdressers, in the school, she used to come into our primary schools and listen to kids read. When, I, when she was in France and had to learn a foreign language in her 40s, do you know how difficult that is? Yikes. She did it with peace. She carried peace, the supernatural peace that surpasses all understanding. And, you know, all of us are aware today, and we've heard lots and very importantly today, this world, we've, we see that it's not a peace. On the very day that was meant to be our Freedom Day here in the UK, the headlines, all the news channels were prepped and ready. It was meant to be Freedom Day, the day where all restrictions from the COVID pandemic were going to be lifted off of this nation. Yet we woke up to the news that the Ukraine had been invaded by Putin as they slept. And Putin's very words were that he was ordering troops into eastern Ukraine on peacekeeping duties. How evil, how unjust. Let's call it what it is. You know, more than ever in this world, people are looking for peace. There's an ache in people's hearts. Closer to home, there's the financial crisis, food poverty is at the highest in this nation ever. We see the pandemic of anxiety and, and dispeace and unrest. Everyone's got an opinion about everything. More than ever, there's a longing and an aching in this nation for peace. And if anyone, any group of people should be famous for the peace that they carry, it's the church of Jesus Christ. It's us. Because it's Jesus' church. And he is known as the Prince of Peace. But you know, it's easier said than done to be a a peacemaker, to carry peace. It's not easy being a Christian. You know, the very fact that some of you have made it to, to church today is an absolute miracle that you could get out of bed. You're so anxious that sometimes you just get one leg out of bed in faith, praying that the next one's going to follow. So we honor you today if you're here and you're feeling dispeace in your soul. And there's a verse that Jesus, a very incredible prayer that, that has transformed my inner being, that Jesus said these famous words in John 14. It says, peace, I leave with you. This was Jesus speaking before he went home to be with his father in heaven. He says, peace, I leave with you. My peace, I give you. I do not give you to you as the world gives do not, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Someone needs to hear that today, maybe at home. You need to hear that. Do not be afraid. And I believe that today God wants to give us all an impartation of this supernatural peace. And we find the word peacemaker 
in one of Jesus' most famous sermons. It was my favorite sermon of Jesus, the Sermon on the Mount in the Beatitudes. And King Jesus at this moment, he's announcing the way of kingdom living. He's announcing the kingdom. He was, what he was saying was controversial. A lot of people didn't like it. it. It ruffled a lot of feathers. It went against the norm. It was different. It was an upside down kingdom where down is often the way up. And in this sermon, he's speaking to disciples. He's speaking to people like us. And multitudes of people have flocked to see Jesus because they've heard about him. They've seen him heal people. They've seen him feed people. They've they've seen him be compassionate in a world that was not compassionate. Rome in this day, they ruled the land. There was Roman soldiers everywhere on the streets outside people's home. People paid their taxes to Rome and they lived in fear of Rome. And in this moment in history, Jesus enters the scene, sent by God to earth, God in flesh. And he says in Matthew 5, 5, now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach. He said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. There's a fight for our purity today. Hang on to your purity, young people, because you will see God. Fight to stay pure. And then this is my key passage. Blessed are the peacemakers. I see a lot of peacemakers in front of me today. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. And today I want to look at two things. It started out as six points, by the way. Dun, dun, dun. But I reduced it because I felt God take me to two particular things. I want to talk about two things that I learned from my mom about having a legacy of peace. And the first one is peacemakers are not passive. Peacemakers are not passive. And I was thinking about my mum last night and what she used to say and used to sing over us. Ben was watching the boxing last night on the sofa and I was just thinking, reflecting about mum. And mum was really intentional. I think if I could sum up my mum's approach to life, my mum's approach to parenting was that she was intentional. She'd sing and she'd look into our eyes with her quirky, most beautiful little voice, little, little voice, and she says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. She used to look us in the eye with his love, and she'd sing us the songs of Jesus. And I realize here today, not all of us had this growing up, but it starts today. It can start today with us from this generation on. She, she used to sing, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. She'd sing of his love. She'd sing songs like when we were being grumpy, like we all can. She'd sing, uh, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will, yeah. But those words, <laughs> I didn't really do the song much justice, did I? I was sort of, do I sing it? Do I not? <laughs> but those words formed my life. They shaped my life. My mum was intentional. She parented us kids with purpose. Everything she did, she did with intention. She knew that if she didn't teach us, 
who God was, someone else was going to teach us everything that God wasn't. And the world has a very warped view of what Christianity is. The world has a very warped view, let's not kid ourselves, parents, of what the world says is truth. And there's a trend today, my teacher friend was telling me, called permissive parenting. And in this theory, it says that parents provide few guidelines and rules. It's where the child from a young, young age is true to his or her own nature. But this is what the Bible says, Deuteronomy 6. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Good name for a church. The Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. They want to be on our hearts. Impress them on your children. Now, mum never forced them on her children. She loved them upon us. She loved the words of Jesus into our hearts. It goes on. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols around on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. And in the New Living Translation, I love the simplicity. It says, repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you're at home and when you're on the road and when you are going to bed and when you're getting up. Mum was intentional about this. And I know, Mum, you probably did days, had bad days, just like the rest of us, and you got it wrong some days. But Jesus was part of our lives. Jesus never stayed in the car park on a Sunday as we drove off home. We never said, Jesus, you stay there. You guard my car parking spot. You can't come home with us. <laughs> but Jesus, he walked with us. He talked with us. He was with us at the meal table. He was with us in the car journey. Whether we wanted to hear it, whether we were having a good day or bad day, Jesus was everything. And that, for me, that's so refreshing to hear. There was no approach in mum's approach to parenting that was passive. As a peacemaker, she carried and took took up and mobilized her authority as a daughter of God. And she lifted it over our home like a banner. Mum loved us kids. And I know you mums, you love your kids. And we're all just a work in progress, learning about it on the job. And I'm trying to think about how I can describe my mum, her love. You know, mum's love was like gentle as a dove in moments. But in times, at moments, her, her love for us was like a roaring lion. It was fierce, it was strong, it was passionate, and she fought for us. And I honor you for that today. Peacemakers, the kind of peacemakers that God is calling today are not passive. You know, the truth is that peacemakers are sent into war zones. And... Often we envision peacemakers as like a hippie dancing around in a circle with flowers in their hair singing, give peace a chance. But peacemakers, the God that God, the kind that God is calling us to be today, are not passive. They are passionate. They're passionate. And I love this Charles Spurgeon quote. It says, train up a child in the way you should go. But be sure you go there, but be sure you go that way yourself. Peacemakers know that it's caught, not taught. Yeah. And my mum, and I know this might sound a bit intense, but 
don't worry, it's not going to get so intense. We're going to go somewhere. I hope you're not feeling bad. My message is not here to condemn anyone, okay, today. And uh, my mum and dad, they'll often tell us a story uh, they've told in, when dad would preach. My, pa- my dad was the pastor here for many, many years. He'd t- they'd tell the story of when we used to come in from secondary school. It was like the war. The world came in the door, <laughs> Yeah. We'd been stuck in the world all day, surrounded by their opinion, and uh, we were called to be there. And you know, my mum, my brothers in their maroon jackets, looking very handsome from Bishop Luffer, they'd walk in the door and the world would come with them. And my petite little mum, five foot six, she had to intentionally counteract the world that would walk in the door. Mum, she did that with prayer. I'm going to talk about that in a moment. She did that with with speaking truth, putting courage in us. us. She'd counteract the lies. She, me, for me as her daughter, she kind of kept me close. She didn't suffocate me or hold me back, but she kept me close. She kept this conversation going. Me and mum, we talked about everything. (laughs) Nothing was ever off the table. And I think us mums, mums of girls, <laughs> we need to keep that conversation going with our daughters. Nothing is off the table. We talked about sex, we talked about everything. Because then this child, they are given in our hands as arrows. And we need to be intentional. My, my three big brothers, they were really handsome from when they were little. I'm out, I hope you're not squirming. Joe, you're squirming over there? I hope you are. You used to make me squirm for years. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not going to drop him in it, Pastor Matt, today. But they were always really good looking growing up, yeah? These three boys. And the challenge with that was that everywhere the boys went, the girls would follow. Yeah? And uh, I remember um, one very hot summer's day. <laughs> Matt will never let me preach again. <laughs> Don't worry. I got your back, Matt. It was spring cleaning day in Bible college, okay? We, my parents were house parents in the Bible training center. And uh, there was this beauty of a girl, and I don't want to dishonor her today. She came to, she turned up at the door, not wearing a whole lot. And she knocked on the door and, and said, can I, can I, and guess who answered the door? My mum, Avril, yeah. And she said, can I see Matt? Can Matt come out? And... Uh, she, she, her mum was like, do you know how, how my mum responded? She gave her a Henry Hoover and got the girl hoovering the downstairs corridor. Yeah, she invited her in, but she was intentional with that Hoover. <laughs> and I say all that because mum knew it was a time not to be silent. It's an hour, it's a day for us, the Church of Jesus Christ, to not be silent, to not be passive. And I want to ask us all a question, because time is going. Is there an area in our life today where we have become silent, where we've become passive, an area where we're not intentional anymore? Maybe it's in your marriage Maybe you've grown passive as a parent, or maybe you stop watering the grass that is in front of you. You, You're looking to other places, but now's a day, a fresh day, where we can be intentional today. Maybe your Bible's gotten dusty. Today, we can be intentional to start a new beginning in our walk with Jesus. Point number two, and I'm going to crack through these, is peacemakers pray. God has called us as peacemakers, to live a lifestyle of prayer. Mum knew that the biggest, the greatest influence she'd ever have upon our lives was from her knees. The greatest influence she'd ever have on the world around her was from her, her knees, from the place of prayer. And 2 Corinthians, it says, We are human, but we do not wage war as humans do. We use God's mighty weapons. We have in our hands this mighty weapon called prayer. 
It's not a worldly weapon to, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. Peacemakers are armed with prayer. One of the greatest things that we can do for the Ukraine is to pray. And you know what scripture I pray over Putin? I pray there's a scripture in, in the Psalms that says that the mountains melt like wax before the Lord. And I pray that literal, because I ain't got nothing else, that Putin would melt like wax. His evil schemes, his evil agenda will melt like wax before the Lord Almighty. And peacemakers, we yield this weapon called prayer. This isn't just for the parents. It's not just for the chicks. It's not just for in desperate times. We carry this weapon called prayer. And God has called us to be faithful in prayer with this weapon. When mum, when we were young, um, Sammy and I, my sister Sammy shared a room and we had a rowing machine. And mum, she'd toddle in. We never used the rowing machine, but guess who did? My marvellous mum. And she'd, she'd toddle in in her shell suit tracksuit and her fluffy slippers, and she'd row and she'd pray. She intentionally carved out time in her day to pray. And she'd go to war on our behalf. She'd pray for everyone that she'd spoken to on the phone that day. And she would stand in the gap and took her place as a peacemaker. She took her place as a child of God and she'd pray. And I heard an incredible story and if the band would like to join me, whenever you want. I heard an incredible story of Chris Gray's mum. Uh, Chris Gray is now our youth pastor, uh, kids church pastor, sorry. And he's been since January. And when Chris Gray was 11, 12 years old, he walked away from Jesus. He was born and raised in the local church. And uh, 11 or 12, he decided that the world was more appealing than Jesus, that the, the world was more appealing than the church. And uh, what Jan did in her broken and in, with her broken heart and in her moment of desperation. Because us parents, we never want to see our children walk away from Jesus. What she did was she got praying. She realized that in her hands, she carried this mighty weapon called prayer. And she began to pray. And what she did as well is she got her friend praying. Her friend was Hazel Hollingsworth, the mum of John and David and Phil. And what she did is she gave a photo of her child, Chris, <laughs> to Hazel. And day after day, year after year, they began to pray for Chris. They'd stand in the gap. They'd claim in claim him back for the name of Jesus. They'd come against the lies of the devil, the plan of the devil to take him away from his calling, to take him away from the kingdom of God, to take him away from the future that he was going to have to be a peacemaker himself. And you know, there was moments when Jan was just really discouraged and that might be you today. You've been praying for your child for years. And, and Jan... She learned to trust, trust, trust. And I think many of us have just got to be trusting, trusting in the one who is able for your miracle. It might not be your child. It might be a healing. It might be salvation for your loved one. But she trusted. She trusted. She held on to hope. And when 10 years had passed... Chris phoned Jan and, and he said he was in a customer's garage on Hailing Island and he said, Mum, can you pray for me? I am at a crossroads in my life. I don't know what to do. I don't know if I'm going self-employed or if I should go and work for this company. And, Gra and Jan put it back in his court. She said, okay, Chris, you pray. You pray about it. And in that garage that day, 
Chris prayed his first prayer in 10 years and he felt God in that moment supernaturally and if God can do this for Chris, he can do it for any of you. God spoke to Chris and said, Chris, give me back your life. Give me back your life and I will show you what you can do, what I can do. And in that moment, Chris knelt down and his heart broke before the Lord and the love of Jesus entered into Chris's life and Chris rededicated his life to Jesus that day. And from that moment on, Chris's life has been transformed forever. And this is not just hype, but this is what Jesus has done. And Jesus can do for you today. And Chris's wife, Michelle, came to know Jesus. And now they have children on their own. And 10 years on, Chris is leading our kids' church. That is the power of prayer. That is the power of peacemakers' prayer that you carry from the youngest to the oldest. We carry it. So I want to do like a simple, I want to challenge us to like a super practical end to my message today is I want to activate us as a church to pray. And, but I want us to get active with giving out photos. This is my parents' prayer wall that they have at the end of their bed. It's super cute. Some of these kids are their grandkids. This is what I've learned from mum. Some of them are Great can kids, we've got compassion children. Some of them are adoptive grandkids. But I want us to give photos. If we need a miracle in our life, let's get practical. Give a photo of your child, of your miracle. If you want a baby, God can do it. Cut a magazine picture out or draw one. Give, get an artist like Tom to draw a picture of baby and give it to someone. And we get praying. We unite together as the church of Jesus Christ to pray and to yield this weapon. And I want to pray this prayer, pray this prayer <laughs> over you. It's from St. Francis. And many of you read this as kids. Yeah, or you sang it in assemblies as a child. And it's called the peace prayer. God wants us to be instruments of peace. Should, do you want to, should we stand together? It says... Make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me bring your love. Where there is injury, your pardon, Lord. Where there is doubt, true faith in you. Make me, make us, Jesus, an instrument of your peace. Where there's despair in life, let me bring hope. Where there is darkness in this world, let me bring light. Where there is sadness in this world, Jesus, let me bring joy. Make me an instrument of your peace. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned, in giving of ourselves that we receive, and in dying that we're born to eternal life. Amen. May we be carriers of your peace, your sons and daughters, Lord, who are peacemakers for these challenging but exciting days. Amen. Amen. And before I, I close out and hand over, we're going to get the kids in. You know, I know there's people here today that maybe you walked away from Jesus or maybe you've never heard of Jesus till you stepped in the building today. The Bible is really clear that you can have peace with God through Jesus Christ. It's the reason this Jesus came to earth to die for our sins, to die for our shame, to die for everything that could separate us from Jesus. And maybe there's an aching in your heart today. Maybe you haven't got peace Maybe you haven't got peace with God, but you want that today. On this Mother's Day in 2022, do you want to give your life over to Jesus? It's the most important decision you could ever, ever make. His love for you 
is passionate. It is wild. His love for you is not passive. If you want to repeat this prayer after me, I want to lead you in a prayer. Maybe you're watching online and you want to say, I want to follow you, Jesus. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, today I give you my life. I want to follow you. I have decided to follow you, Jesus. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you, you forgive me of my sin. Come and fill me with your Holy Spirit. I want to follow you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. And with our eyes closed, and in this special moment, you know, if you've made that decision, this incredible decision, you know that God is calling you. Maybe it's time to come back to Jesus today to make peace with Him. If you said that prayer, then I want you to raise your hand. Will you be bold with me and raise your hand and say, I've done this. I want to follow Jesus. I just want to give you some time. I have decided to follow Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Amen. If you're watching in line, put prayer emoji in the chat. This is a new day. This is a new beginning. God is calling His church to arise as peacemakers. Should we give Jesus an applause for those who have given their lives to Christ? For the fact He's called us to be peacemakers as sons and daughters. Amen.